This is Tyler Cook Speed Shop. Check it out. Bam! I'm putting a, tr a firewall in the trunk of the 1940 Mercury. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. Okay, so I'm like halfway through the process here. I'm ready to weld and it's gonna be plug welded in. But in the beginning, I went and I created some custom braces that kind of mimicked like a factory style brace and then uh, made the sheet metal here. So let's go back and I'll show you how I started this whole process. But what I'm doing is making a fire barrier since the fuel tank is mounted in the trunk of this car. This thing got really rended really bad and it ruptured that fuel tank but I don't want raw fuel rushing right into the interior of the car. All right, so what I gotta do is make some bracing here and then we're gonna put a firewall in here. So originally, this car had, I'll use my pointing ends, you can see over here there was a brace that came down, and the brace that came down, and then there was a brace up here that came down, they crisscrossed and held the car together. I took a picture of a 46 to 48 Mercury sedan, and you can see the uh, crisscross pattern there, and then the spare tire mount for that, and how the back of the seat is there, and that what kept the car you know, structurally integral is that crisscross. But here in this car, I'm going to put a full firewall in it. Since I've got the gas tank mounted in here, I want to seal the back of the car up in case there is a, you know, like a horrendous rear end collision and it ruptures the fuel tank. It doesn't just <laughs> dump fuel into the car and set you on fire because that would be a toasty time. So I don't need to really make the crisscross braces and all that to triangulate the back of the car because when the, the panel is welded all through here, plug welded, through here it'll stiffen the whole car up as one big brace. But I do want to make a couple of braces down. I want to make one down the center where that factory one was here and then I want to make one down here in the wheel tub and one over here in the wheel tub. So you can kind of see the shape of the factory brace there. I've been playing around with some sheet metal. I got some 18 gauge here and I made a little uh, just temporary little brace and I broke up both sides on the brake and then I bead rolled a piece down the center. And I just eyeballed it here. It's not really, it, the, the teeth wouldn't allow, or the, uh, the jaws wouldn't allow the thing to be centered up on the, on the bead roller. So I had to offset it. But I want to make some braces like this. So I've cut out three pieces of 18 gauge. They're three inches wide and they're 21 inches long. I'm going to break them up and I'm going to make some braces like this that the firewall will weld to. They'll be pretty lightweight, but they'll be strong. So we're going to go over here to the brake. We're going to break them up and then bead roll them. Okay, so I fabbed up the middle one here just so I could practice and see how it's going to go before I show you guys. Then we're going to build one right now. But here's what the piece looks like. It's got these uh, 3 8 inch, 3 8 3 8 inch edges I bent up and then I ran it through the bead roller. And then I cut the uh, little triangle pieces down here on the end and I folded the end down so the thing can sit down and it'll have a spot to weld down onto the floor of the, of the trunk floor. There we go, we got the channel bent up. Let's go over the bead roller and we'll burp bead roll this. Just gonna roll her up on through here. There's one pass, I'm gonna do another one here. A little bit more pressure. Hey, bam, there we go. Look at that. Perfect. And breaking up the edges first keeps it from getting wonky with a bead roller. If I did that just with the, uh, the uh, sheet metal being flat, it would curve it with a bead roller, and that would be hard to break it. So 
breaking it up first makes a nice piece. Okay, I got the braces set up in here. I use a little blue tape on the other side to hold them. We got the feet bent over. They're sitting on there. It looks like it's going to be good. Um, I got to clean up the primer and stuff on the other side where it's going to weld. I can drill some plug weld holes. It's going to plug weld to the wheel wells. I got a lot of shadow action. It's going to plug weld to the wheel wells on the inside of the uh, channel. Then plug weld the feet down here. And then the sheet metal will plug weld to the back of these braces here like that. But I'll add, you know, structural rigidity between the upper and the uh, sail panel thing there uh, and down here to the floor. And then the triangulation will be when the sheet metal is welded on there, it'll lock the whole thing together. What I've done here is I use some tape and I've laid out and I've drilled these holes. These are my plug weld holes. I'm going to plug weld from the inside of the wheel well, or I mean, sorry, the outer side of the wheel well into my braces. So I've also drilled... Uh, two plug weld holes at the bottom of this. So the braces are gonna come here and they're gonna sit like this. Use the tape to hold it. It's gonna plug weld to the floor and then those plug welds are gonna come through and plug weld up into the side of the brace here. I'll use a zip screw first to draw them in, to draw the metal tight together. And that'll hold it and then I can weld it one at a time. And then up top here, I'm just going to uh, weld it on this edge of this lip up here, weld that up there. But this will tie this all in. I've got everything marked out. I've just got to go out and get the welder. I've got to weld up these tail pieces here and grind these smooth. I'll weld them on the inside so I can grind this overlap off and uh, smooth that out, but it'll, it'll make those tight. So all, th all three of these, I've, I've drilled the plug welds on both wheel wells, and I've got all three brace pieces uh, drilled for the welding down here into the bottom of the thing. So they're ready to go. So that's gonna be awesome. Okay, I used some zip screws and I zip screwed down through my plug weld holes. I zip screwed two into the wheel tub to hold the thing tight. I've got it clamped up here, so ready to weld. I got both sides in. I'll get them first so I got room to maneuver. Then I'll put the center one in. I think I'll set you up on the time lapse and uh, we'll do some welding and we'll burn these in. Bam, there we go, that was fun, look at that. Got those braces all welded in nice. Nice and strong here. Ah. You saw on the time lapse there, I plug welded from the outside of the wheel well in there, got that burned in good. Then burned in up top here, tied in both sides. And then the sheet metal is gonna come all across the back of this and skin down the whole thing. But everything's tied in. So this will be behind the seat. The seat will be down here. And then up here, probably the the seat probably won't be right up tight against these because I gotta deal with this uh, bend here in the floor. The seat will probably be, like the back will probably start this first rib and go up and there'll be a space behind the seat. The seat will go up and over the wheel tubs. I might build some kind of armrest here, kind of like couch it in a little bit. But the seat will come down off here then extend out um, on a riser here but this is gonna make a strong first step. This bracing tied all this in real nice and it's gonna be super stiff like this. So now we'll start working on the sheet metal to get this all uh, blanked in here. Okay, I got the piece uh, picked out for the, the firewall. I'm making it out of 20 gauge because it doesn't really have to do anything. A little bit of strength, but it's gotta be just pretty much like a fire break. 
So 20 gauge is actually one of the, I didn't have a piece of 18 gauge big enough, so 20 gauge will be fine. It's not gonna add a lot of weight, but it'll be structural enough for what we're doing. We're gonna put some bead rolls in it in between the braces. So I've already got my plug well holes, my plug holes, my plug weld holes drilled down here because this is where the flange is going to be that sits on flat on the floor. So I went ahead and I drilled this first just because it was easier. I'm going to hit it with a DA real fast, a 120 grit, scuff this thing all up real fast, and I hit a little bit of rust on here. I ground that down. I'm going to put this on the inside behind the seat so you won't see it. And we'll shear it out. We'll put it on the brake and we'll start fitting it up in the car. So let me let me give her the DA. You can check this out. Just got a cheap junk carbon freight DA here. Here we go. She's mm. using Chicago Electric Shear to cut this out. I did a video on. Buying this, it was thirty-six dollars from Harbor Freight. It's worked out pretty good. It cuts us, cuts us twenty gauge real nice. Just like that. Okay, we're gonna put the brake on the bottom edge here. We'll go ahead and slide, whoop, shoot, hit the car. Don't hit the car. Run out of space in here. All right. Now I gotta bend this past 90 a little bit. Here we go. My uh, brake struggles just a little bit in the center. I gotta put a gusset, another one, uh, I think another one of these that, that springs the bender just a little bit. So I'm getting my uh, sheet metal hammer all we'll clamped in here and we give her a little tap action. Don't hit the car with the sharp sheet metal, you put a scratch in it. Son of a gun. <clears throat> Dang it. Cam, nothing nice. Try that again. There we go. Alright. Got our bend down there. Let's go ahead and uh, put it in the car. See what we get here. Ta -da! Well, that ain't too bad. Okay, I got the piece back out of the car here. Now I'm starting to lay out the plug welds for the uh, where it's going to hook to the uh, supports there. So I used some soapstone and drew out the edge of the supports, and I've staggered. Every, every four inches and then stagger them so the holes will be staggered, the plug holes will be staggered up both sides there in the middle and on this side. And I got a lot of drilling to do so I'm going to get at it. Probably set you up on a time lapse, I guess you can watch me do that. And then uh, we should be ready to almost get this thing fitted up in here. I still got to clean up the, where the top edge is going to weld in. Oh shoot, that needs plug hold holes too. Let me think about, yeah. 
and I'm going to need plug old holes to go in up in here. I got to clean that up. Those tabs that used to hold the original cardboard uh, trunk uh, material that was the trunk material, I'll bend those up. The metal will go under them, then I'll squeeze them down, that'll hold the top. I almost forgot we gotta put the bead rolls in this thing. I would have had it half welded in before I remembered that. So I went and I just laid out three uh, vertical bead rolls, they're six inches apart. And uh, we'll go over to the bead roller. I hope I got enough throat to reach into this internal one. We'll see. If not, I can definitely do these two. Hopefully, I can reach that one. But we'll go over to the bead roller now and I'll run around through. Here we got our bead rolled up, but man, I gotta get like a new technique or something because it absolutely destroyed this panel. Like, look at the warpage. It's 20 gauge, so it goes all over the place real easy. But man, it, it, it deforms it at every start and stop like so bad. Like, luckily it's getting clamped to structure, but man, it, I mean, this, this is nuts. You know, it'll, it'll clamp down, but it. It just wrecks it bad. Like, I want the bead rolls in there because it's better than the panel, but, you know, this is crazy. It's That's like three inches of action in there. It'll it'll clamp down, but man, I, I gotta figure out something to do bead rolling here a little bit better because this is just like, if this is something I cared about, like that I wanted to be seen or something, like this, is, this isn't acceptable. But let's go ahead and put it in the car and, uh, Zip screw it in a bunch of places and get her lined up in there and it's going to be good enough for a trunk firewall, but man. Well, after a lot of struggle and I got her up in there, it is a little warpy on the top, but I'm going to, the bottom is pretty true because that uh, angle on there helps keep it straight. So I'm going to do is I'm going to weld up from the bottom and weld up and work it and just kind of like work it around and push it around. It'll probably still have a little bit of waves up there, but guess what? When you're, when the car's on the ground, and especially if there's going to be upholstery in here, you're not going to see it. So um, it is what it is here, but we're moving forward. So I'm going to bust out the welder and start plugging, plugging away. Get it. We're going to plug away at it and uh, plug weld this sucker up in here. So there we go, it's all welded and good. It, it's a little woo, wonky around the top there, but the rest of it's pretty straight, so good enough for trunk space. Might get upholstered over anyways if I get upholstery in the trunk in the future, so who knows. So the last step's gonna be just uh, welding up in these corners. I'm just gonna cut out a piece and just, you know, tack weld it all the way around and it'll get seam sealed. So I'll just make those real fast. It's still kind of dark in here. It's actually dark and smoky. I gotta let this car air out because of the welding. But here's the inside of the uh, 
trunk panel there. You can see the braces, all the welds through. Oop. This is going to be like really sweet. I think there's going to be end up being a storage area behind the seat because the seat's got to come down um, over the front edge of that down onto the, the angled pan a little bit. And I think uh, probably soon, like not even another week, I'm going to go to the junkyard and look for a seat, probably like a minivan seat that folds down. It is like hinged on its own. So I can have the back seat in here and then fold the seat down to get back behind the storage area. But I think I'll probably put the spare tire, like a donut spare back here. And there might be room to mount the battery behind the seat, depending on how much is that. And then I'll have like storage cubbies for, uh, you know, like an umbrella or maps or whatever will go back behind the seat. There'll probably be about eight inches of space behind it. But I, I like the way it came out. It's super tied together. I just got to get in here and clean it all out, vacuum it out and then get seam sealer down, cover all these welds, seal up all the wheel well and everything. I've got some Eastwood uh, seam sealer. We'll seam seal it all up real good and then hit it with a coat of primer and some black paint. And this will pretty much be, be done back here, except for the, uh, the seat mounts, which we'll probably bolt on later. But I really, it came out, it came out good. It looks kind of like professional-ish. So uh, I'm happy with that. And I can't wait to get this cardboard out of here so we can start working in here, uh, get some more space in here. So I've got the uh, corner pieces tacked in. They're good to go. Everything's done. I just got to take the grinder and burp, grind all these plug welds down. And same thing, seal all these seams up here all the way around. And then get a coat of primer and a coat of black paint. Or actually, I'm thinking about using a Herky liner, truck bed liner material. Doing over the wheel wells, this trunk panel here, all, everything that could get... You know scratch from stuff sliding around it'll make the thing not slide and then I might put a false floor over the gas tank come out level and have a little bit of storage on top of the gas tank as well since that's down in the well and just have a carpeted flat floor in here and then I can put a nice red carpet to match the interior I've got the original uh, interior panels that go back in here over the wheel tubs I'll slap them back in for now but it'll take a little bit more upholstery but if I just do the Herky liner here just black this out, it'll protect it and sound deaden it and give a nice durable surface for this trunk area. So I'll probably do that. But I'm going to hit this with a grinder and we'll finish out the video.